popes, politicians, and musicians have been rumored to sell their souls for money, power, or fame. What about those who have sold their soul for something selfless? So extraordinary, yet they didn't even get credit for their life's work. Three, two, one. 1952, Pasadena, California. In a quiet suburban street, the ground shakes, windows shatter, smoke rises from what was once a home. Inside, they find the remains of a man. Nobody knows exactly what happened suicide or something far stranger. Despite only having a high school degree and some college, he was one of America's greatest minds. He wasn't a criminal, he wasn't a soldier, he was a scientist that would later lay out the groundwork for NASA. He built engines that would one day carry men to the moon. He founded the lab that later became the heart of NASA. And yet, when history was written, he was erased because he was dangerous, because he believed in things no scientist was supposed to believe in, because he didn't just build rockets, he tried to summon gods. This is the story of Jack Parson, the man who sold his soul for his country. Every era has whispers of a deal made in the dark. A violinist who played too perfectly, a guitarist who strummed forbidden chords, a pope who traded his soul, and politicians who wanted their place in history. It's easy to view these people as demonic, but just like Jack Parson, they weren't always this way. Something drove them to evil before NASA, before the space race. Space is there, and we're going to climb it. The moon and the planets are there. There was a group of dreamers, students and mischief, calling themselves the Suicide Squad. They tested the rockets in the dry California desert where explosions were common and success was rare. Among them was a young man named John Whiteside Parson. Jack was unlike the others. He didn't want to reach space. He wanted to touch the divine. He studied alchemy, the occult, and writings of Aleister Crowley, a man known as the wickedest man in the world. To Jack, science and magic weren't enemies. They were two of the same cosmic coin. He believed rocket fuel could be a kind of modern alchemy, transforming something greater, breaking free from Earth, and maybe even God himself. Jack's experiments worked. His team's research became the foundation of Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the birthplace of America's space program. But as his rockets rose higher, his personal life began to spiral downwards. He joined a secret occult lodges, performed midnight rituals in his Pasadena mansion, and claimed to invoke angels and demons. One ritual, they say, was meant to summon a goddess. The Scarlet Woman soon appeared in his life. Her name was Marjorie Cameron, and to Jack, she was the proof that magic worked. Parson would perform sexual seances to Pan, a Greek god from ancient Greece, and Horus for philosophical and ritual practices. But what came next was even stranger. Parson claimed he had received a vision, a revelation from a being beyond human comprehension. In his writings, he said this entity declared to be the Antichrist. And when I say entity, I mean himself. In his manifesto, he states, quote, I Balarn, Antichrist, in the year 1949, of the rule of the Black Brotherhood called Christianity do make my manifesto to all men, and I, the Antichrist, come among you." Unquote. This was a symbol of libertarian. He believed the old God, the old moral system, were dying, and a new age was coming, one of free fire and flight. In this vision, he was to help usher in Eon of Horus and make man become his own God. To Jack, this was a prophecy 
a merge between magic and destiny. He believed his rockets were the tool to bring on a new creation, but to everyone else, it sounded like madness. The government took notice. To Parson, he wasn't a visionary. He was unstable and dangerous. He was blacklisted and stripped from a security clearance and left without work. The reason was because Jack Parson received a job opportunity in Israel. Thus, for the first time since the Roman Legion destroyed Jerusalem in the year 70 AD, the Jewish people have a nation of their own. United Nations teams accompany Israeli soldiers under the white flag to retrieve the bodies of soldiers killed in the continuing strife with Arab troops. The UN was able to affect some uneasy... The incident involved him removing confidential documents from his job at Hughie's aircraft. The documents involved technical reports as a consultant for the Israeli rocket program, which later led to an FBI investigation in 1950. Then came 1952. He was broke, desperate, and experimenting again, this time alone. They said it was an accident, a chemical mixture gone wrong. Others said suicide. But how can a man that's been studying rockets his whole life suddenly blow himself up? It's unclear, but today, every time a rocket leaves Earth, it carries a piece of Parson's legacy and his curse. Without Jack Parson, we wouldn't have won the space race. He was a man who dreamed of touching the stars, but may have reached darkness instead. Jack Parson, the man who sold a soul for his country,